Welcome everybody to our Saturday webinar. And today we have Jim. Jim will be hey. channeling for us. And hello, Jim. Hey. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> Jim, I was thinking today that we will do something slightly different to mix it up a little and uh, get all of us thinking a bit. Um, so, I wanted to start with asking you, oh, first, I have to just be polite and say hello to all of our members that are here. Thank you for joining us and everyone that is with Jim. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And uh, Jim, do you have any announcements? Um. Not really. I just have some visitors coming from across the ocean. I have Oleg Gabrielson coming on the 14th and 15th of November. He won't be here for a webinar, but he'll be here visiting from Denmark. And I have Mark Zinzo coming back into town here for a while as well. So you'll get to see him. He should be on here this morning sometime. And just catching up on all the sessions and figuring out all the time changes across the world. Those are the only announcements that I have. <laughs> okay. And of course, anyone that wishes to set up a session with Jim, um, uh, please go to our website, humancolony.org, and you can find the link there to set up a session with Jim. Um, you know, for first timer, I always recommend Lakesh. Um, <laughs> I know I'm biased, but I can't help it. Um, he's great. So, <clears throat> um, I would like to ask you today, Jim, um, why did you start to do this? And, and what, why are, do you continue doing it? What is your intent? Why did I start? Was the, was the question, why did I start to do this? Mm -hmm. I did, it was totally spontaneous. I didn't even know what channeling was when I started channeling. I was doing a Reiki session on Max Steinberg or Max Rempel. And um, all of a sudden, I was getting instructions how to in my head on how to Reiki him better. And um, I told him about this. And then a couple weeks later, it started happening again. And he asked if he could speak to them, ask them a question. And when he asked them the question, I just started channeling. And I didn't even know really what channeling was, except that somebody else somebody was talking else to, me talk to me. My, what? It was oh. feedback, Jim. Oh, okay. I, I guess my eyes got real big because he said, it's okay, it's okay. And... So we talked about it afterwards, and he gave me some Bashar tapes so that I would know that I wasn't alone and that it wasn't something really crazy. And so I really didn't know what channeling was when I started channeling. So, But the reason I continue is because it helps a lot of people, and that's what I always wanted to do. I wanted to always be helpful. I always was interested in helping others and this seems to be the a way to really reach out in a way that's very different and very personal in many cases to people and i love that very good thank you so um on that note i would like to ask um everyone that it's here and with Jim. Um, and we will start with with uh, the members that are with Jim. Um, why do they do this? What is their intention behind finding out all this information, knowing it about all this stuff? What is your intention behind all of it? And the only thing is, please everyone keep your answers short since there's a lot of people. Um, but I really, really would like to know uh, what is everybody seeking behind all of this? Hi. Okay. 
go first. Okay, Angie's coming up. Okay. Go ahead. I um when I first found out about um channeling and channeling with aliens and things like that, um I knew that we were never alone. And so this was just my um confirmation on trying to learn about really who's out there, why why they're there, you know, why they come into this area, um, why they're willing to speak with us. So and and I've stuck with it this long because um the knowledge and information we get is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else here? Okay. They're asking why you you stick with um channeling and listen to it and learn uh, and why you come to these kind of events so did anybody else with you want to uh, say something did did anybody else want to say anything not yet. not yet okay no one yet okay okay all right so um I'll start. I'll start in the room with uh, Valerie. I'm sorry, I missed the question, Sabrina. <laughs> what was the question again? <laughs> um, why do you do this? What is it that you're seeking? Okay, that's easy for me, I guess. Yeah, just short answers. Yeah, I am seeking this because I am seeking myself. I want to know who I am on the inside. Oh, nice. There you go. Very good. Thank you. Um, who would like to go next? Michelle? <laughs> I'm psychic. I knew that was happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, Gosh, it was such a revelation to me. I didn't really understand this was a thing until I happened upon a three and a half hour session that Max and um, Zachariah had done. And I was just fascinated. I watched for a long time and I did a private session with Almatak, Kim, Louise, and Almatak. And I asked if it was a good idea if I become part of the group. And it was so fascinating to me that I could wonder about how something in the bigger picture works or something I can't see works that I just wanted, I, I could, I cannot, I still seek and want to hear and know and grow. All of this has been like developmentally from the time I joined till now has like, you know, pushed me along the, a, a diff, much more intense spiritual path um, and I what I want is God what I want is to know how I operate trusting that power also so I just continue to seek and grow and seek and grow I guess that would be my the short answer excellent thank you thank you Michelle um, Casper Hey, yeah, um, I'm doing things because I think uh, I just want to discover exciting new adventures and uh, have some fun and learn. So that's what I'm doing this. Thank you. Christine? Um, I don't know how I happened upon it, but um, wow, short-term memory. I really love this. To me, it makes so much sense. I don't understand why people are so resistant. Wow, cool. Wow, well, thank you. Um, <clears throat> Sean? Uh, I didn't hear the question. What's the question? So by learning about all these things that, that we learn here, what is, what is the purpose for you for doing this? Um, it, there's multiple reasons. I'll just give you a few short ones. Uh, one of them is so that I can 
learn to uh, love everyone. Another one is um, to my soul's evolution. Uh, being here on Earth, um, you can evolve your soul much faster than uh, other places in a, in a very short time. Um, and also um, to um, become more of who I am. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Shir? Hi. Um, my personal feeling is that I'm supposed to be here and I believe in what we are doing here. And I know that uh, I could be a very great help and this is a great help for me. And, you know, I just love it, <laughs> basically. Cool. Thank you. Um, I, I knew I could put them on the spot and be okay with it. Um, anybody else would like to volunteer? Um, if you I'll don't want to say it's fine. I'll go ahead, Angie. Okay. Basically, I think I've been led here. And my whole purpose is to connect with people and to connect spiritually. And I think I been doing that in the few weeks that I've been around and it's really really broadened my my science my spirit and even my channeling it's beautiful I love you guys I really feel at home um, I Thank feel like I've known you for a long time you know it's a it's a beautiful place oh how nice thank you yes thank you anybody else i can yes yeah. oh go ahead um this is christy oh hi um, hi good morning um good morning the reason that i chose that i choose to listen to the hugelo and all the channeling is the through the various channelers they give the information um for the galactic what the, what's going on in the galactic uh, world with uh, various ETs and so through listening I've learned a lot about all of the ETs out there and so my whole perspective has expanded like so much just through listening and learning and I've opened those those aspects of myself up as well because um, I relate to the questions asked or the, what the channeler is is sharing as well. So that's why I love listening and participating in, in the, these webinars. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Um, anybody else who wish to speak? Jody's mic doesn't work, but she wrote that out. Do you want me to read it or would you like to read it? Um, you can read it, go ahead. Jody wrote, it started out as a curiosity. She had had many dreams as a child about ships and aliens and wind. She writes, and when I found Jim's wet Jim, it felt very authentic. Now I just want to learn everything I can about myself and my star family. Wow. Excellent. Thank you. Also, there's going to be a day where these ETs are going to be here on Earth, and I may freak a lot of people out. And if I can just be there to like assist those people um, with, you know, the integrating, you know, the knowledge of yes, we're not That's alone, true. then true. I would be just so happy. That's part of the reason too. Yes, uh, Sam, would you like to say something? Sure. Um, I believe I was led here for a reason. I felt like it was family. Um, I was soul searching uh, for a few years because I felt the calling from my uh, native homeland, uh, Angkor Wai. And then I woke up <clears throat> in 2015. And then uh, as I was soul searching, I, f I saw a video that Jim was channeling, uh, spoke some alien language. I go, ah, um, this looks interesting. And for some reason, it just felt like family. And I start joining Hukalo, become a member because I mean this is nothing new to me because in my culture, 
um, alien has been walking with us since ancient time, and we're aware of that. And then uh, now all I'm doing now is just uh, trying to <clears throat> find out more about myself. And and uh, with Jim channeling, you know, his message coming through clearly. And I don't know what it is. I just, I just feel really connected with him. So that's why I, I stay with Hukulu. Well, thank you. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, <clears throat> so I think, if, did anybody else want to say something? Go All on. right. So I'll, Hello. Yes. Oh, Some, okay. um, I have someone here that wants to say something. Go yeah, ahead. now was Jay. It's Raymond. First off, hey, guys. Hello, This Raymond. is Raymond. Someone we miss in the webinar and he can use a little bit of energy right now that is neil 333 so send healing prayers his way and he graciously appreciates it is he okay also is he okay yeah he's okay just misses coming to the webinars oh okay because of the time difference right now and I told him I'd give him a shout out. Okay. Why I did this was I knew I was part of something bigger, something bigger than humanity even. And it started 15 years ago of soul searching and meditation. I always pondered, what is the universe? What is this thing called reality? And it led me a down a long path that most people do not want to travel. It brought me to Yeshua, to my higher power in life. He showed me a different way, a better way to live. And I thank him for that. Years down the road, say about three years ago, I had a spiritual awakening, kind of like Rob Gauthier's when he was practicing the hemisync. But I was looking for the same thing like he did, but on a natural basis. Three years ago, I asked, where am I supposed to be? And they brought me up here to New York and introduced me to Jim. And just been wondering more, like everyone else, more about myself. I am not here for myself. I'm here for humanity. And that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. That Very cool. Thank you. Can I just say same and leave it there? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I, I will speak about myself. Um, I've been on this road since forever, I think, since I, I was a child. Um, and you know, I've, I've gone through, I went through many churches, many questions, you know, you all know I love questions. <clears throat> so I've been seeking and seeking. And um, I have to say that I started to find more answers was when um, I had my children and I was home and I was watching Oprah and she actually started to talk about spirituality. Um, which I, I started to see <clears throat> um, that, that that was what I was looking for. That spirit <clears throat> was what I was looking for um, at that point. And I did have at that point uh, a, a bit of a breakthrough, a meditation I had. And then afterwards, like I always see to have that experience again. Obviously, it never happened again at that point. Um, <clears throat> and, and then it evolved. For me, it's all about the self. It's all about knowing 
who we are and you know what are we doing here and and along the way help other human beings um and give them a hand and help them along you know their path and their road and their the since the road winds up and down and in all directions so for me that's what is important and I came up with this because I had watched this video, uh, Jim, and I saw this video, and on the video, um, um, they were talking about the connection, that, that, that there is not, not clinical depression, but just depression that people go through and, and awakening. Um, that is almost like the other side of it, the other side of the coin. Um, <clears throat> so I thought that was very interesting that they were making the connection between one and the other. And this particular person, um, you know, kept looking to have a child, and and she couldn't. She couldn't get herself pregnant. But along the way. Um, you know, she, she kept not wanting to adopt, but along the way she realizes that um, that was the path that she was to take. And, you know, much growth happens within her uh, with this. So on that note, I would like to perhaps ask for Shell today and, and have them maybe talk a little bit about the self to us today um, and teach us a bit um, about that and any other thoughts that he, he wants to talk about. I think, I think that will be good to, um, to start or end the week, um, however you want to look at it, with, with spirit and whatever lessons they want to teach us today. Very good, thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, I would like Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> May I go? Sure. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, thank you. Okay, first of all, hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, my reasons would be everything everyone has shared so far. And just to keep it short. And I'd like to say a thank you, Jim, for being yourself, for sharing. Uh, you're an awesome person. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I, I'd like to say something as well this is Stephanie. go ahead go ahead good morning everyone good morning, I Stephanie. Got, <laughs> hi there jim um i missed quite a bit of it i got disconnected <laughs> for a bit there but i did want to um share that um i've always felt like i've been on a spiritual journey and one thing just led kind of to another and then I, I found out about, uh, I learned about Jane Roberts and the Seth material and, and the light came on and it led me to um, a, the channeling community in general, but into this community in particular, because I met Lakesh on a dial-in program that he was uh, a guest on one time. And I just thought he was so, delightful and so personable and I even got to ask him a question and he you know called me out on a couple of things you know in a very um, uh, evolving kind of experience and from then on I've just been um, learning so much from from Jim and from this community and from the the beings and energies that he channels um, not just about spirit, spirituality and the connectedness of it all, but about my 
self in all of that. And it's been deeply, deeply um, rewarding and, and meaningful to me. And, and Jim, just on a personal note, you know that I appreciate you so much and you are you. loved more than words can say. Thank you so much. I Welcome back, you. Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you, Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't okay. seen you in a while. <laughs> okay. And, and did anybody else wish to speak? Okay. So, um, uh, Casper is saying he would like uh, Ra. You? Ra. Is that what you're saying, Casper? Ra, tear, ra, tear air. Oh, That's right. what he's asking. Yeah, exactly. That's the name. It's actually the, the um, blue avian being that's in contact with Corey Good. So I'm ah, interested. Rocky. For some reason, I feel the calling to ask for him. But yeah, let's see. There's a lot of people out there today. <laughs> an right. insectoid? Yeah. Somebody asked for an insectoid. Oh. How about Randall? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, Grendel. Yeah. How about an inner earth being, if that's oh, possible? Yes. An inner um, earth being, that sounds great. There's one from I speak to from the white Agartha, is that how you say it? Yes. It's Agartha. Yes. yes. Eatos is from the white Agartha. Oh, that would be most welcome, Jim. Do, do you feel a mantis? Um, I, there's so many out there. I don't know who I'm feeling really right now. Right. There's a lot out there. Um, and I think many of them want to speak today and I'm not sure who's going to get through. So. I'd say just roll with yes. it then. <laughs> well, go ahead. Answer one of the archangels on my, the perspectives of my trip to Peru for the last 10 days. Oh, which archangel? I ch channeled several, uh, on the course of the, how to connect your angels. I think maybe it'd be interesting to hear their perspective on what was going on. There's okay. Unusual things going on. Okay. You not, don't have a particular one in mind? Or? They'll pick whoever's the right one. They'll pick whoever. So there's a group of people waiting to come in. They're all standing in line with numbers like at the grocery store, at the deli counter. So, Jim, did you get that? Very good, Jim. So we'll let you um, focus, what? concentrate, and... Who was that last person? What did they say? Me. Did you heard my request before? Uh, what? No, I didn't hear it. Maybe Amok or someone from uh, the race. Amok or Remulac? Okay. Yeah, someone from the race. Okay. Um, wow. There's so many out there. I know they're not all going to get in. So let's see who's, who's going to talk. Um, I'm going to do a little meditation. Anybody else before I go? Thank you, Jim, in advance. Uh, I think that's good, Jim. Huh? I think we're good. Okay, because like three people were talking at once, and I couldn't get that. So. I just said thank you, Jim, in advance. Oh, oh thank you so much. Um, and thank you for being here and holding the energy. I know the lovely people in the room here hold my energy. Uh, and feel the entities as they come in and as they hold that energy they become stronger and and more informative so I appreciate that so much thank you everybody You're welcome. and everybody out there as well thank you for holding the energies and the positivity and the beauty of this this time together and thank you for um, all those kind words and for your dedication to looking for truth and answers and being aware of all of the things that are going on because that is going to be very important in the near future. The awareness of each person and the understanding of how things work a little bit greater in the galaxy is, uh, is important. So thank you very much for your awareness and for your wanting to be aware. And each of you are leaders. Human Colony is a place for leaders, and they're being trained, and some of you are going to be 
holding very important positions or giving very important messages in the future and I've always been told this from the very beginning and it's and I don't um, I don't always I don't ever get upset about the number of people watching or anything like that because I know that God has picked out the ones that need these messages and that are here in the in this room and here in this webinar because he, these are the ones that he wants to hear these things so i'm so grateful and thankful that you are open to this that you have a heart for expanding on just your own personal life but for humanity and for the galaxy and for the universe and for all those things and love goes out from you to all these places and i appreciate that so much so remember you are people of responsibility in some ways that you're going to shine you're going to be greater than just the average human being because you know more and you are going to be aware of more and you're going to bring information to the earth so be aware of that and do not doubt it because it is happening look what happened to me I didn't even know what channeling was but here I am. How did I get here? It was not me for sure. I did not do this on my own. In fact, I would have never ever thought that I could be where I am today when I started. I didn't even know what it was. So Max prepared a huge audience for me in a sense. And it's it may not be a huge audience, but for me it is. But um he prepared all this information and did all this work so that people could hear what the beings had to say and I would have never known how to go about doing that so God was there and God was pushing me forward and here I am today three years later in fact this is almost the third anniversary of the webinars we started our webinars in November of 2013, sometime in November of that year. So we're on a three-year anniversary of webinars. So that's a beautiful thing as well. So thank you very much for your attention, for your dedication, and for your love, especially for your love. All right. On that note, thank I you, will... Jim. But I said thank you for all of that. Oh, you're welcome. Just came up as I was hearing what they had to say. I was saying I have to tell you my side too. <laughs> welcome. But, uh, Can I say welcome to Mark? Sure. Just so you know he's here. Hello, Mark. Hello. Had a devil of a time trying to get in today. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Welcome. We're just about ready to bring in whoever's in first in line with number one. And I'm not sure who that is. Grindle's trying to push in line, but I don't think they're letting him. Um, so um, I will talk to you all later. I'm going to do a small meditation, and someone will be back with you shortly. Much love to you all. Oh, they told me to take a drink before I start. Drink is always good. Yes, they said take a drink first. Yes. You're going to be gone for a while. <laughs> okay.
Greetings and blessings to you. This is Elijah. Morning, Elijah. I have come for a very brief time to speak to you all. Welcome. The earth is in a very volatile position right now. And the world needs God and love and community more than ever. There is separation everywhere. There is things happening to separate families thought processes, and bring people into a state of aloneness and depression. We need to gather together in love and understanding to build the community back up. This is a day and age of violence. This is a day and age of also great love. The duality of these things is very apparent from where you are sitting, I am sure. And I have come to tell you that I will be here many times in the future. God has a great message for his people. And it may not be exactly what you're expecting. But it will be the truth. And it will come clearly to you. You see, many things that some of you have learned in the past about religion and spirituality are convoluted by man's ideas. They are polluted by all kinds of things that do not really belong in religion. Control, money, and all these things, and the very idea that you must do it this way, or else you will not be saved, or you will not be brought into a, a place of communion with those after you die, is a very bad thing that man has done to religion. And I'm sure you understand what I am speaking about. But now, with angel classes and with thought processes moving forward, this is the day and age for the true message to come out, for God to speak and to clarify all the things from the past that are not clear. You look at the Old Testament and you see all the violence and the killing and, the, and the, the sheer fear of all the things happening there. But that is not recorded as the truth because God is not one that wants to bring fear into his people, but love, understanding, acceptance, inclusion. And when Jesus came, you see that th things changed and there was no violence anymore, except for the killing of Jesus and for the killing of those people that were bringing the truth because they wanted it stopped. But still, in that whole area, there was a lot of convoluted words and things. The New Testament wasn't started to be written until hundreds of years after the death of Christ. And so, therefore, much of it is made up or brought down through history in a way that is not pure. And so God wants to keep the record straight, would like you to know exactly how he feels, how much love he has for each of you, how he looks at you. And it is not in condemnation, but in love, acceptance, beauty, and and bringing you into his own and giving you the things that you need to rise up and be who you are in God. Now, some of these ideas will differ from what the church says or differ from what anybody says on this planet. But listen carefully and you will see the clarity that is there. It is pure. And it is of God. Of course, he loves you and wants to bring you into a beautiful world, into a beautiful life. And there is a way to do that without all the damage that the church has done to your mentality, bringing you into a fear-based understanding of what love is making you, saying to you all these things you cannot do instead of all the things that are there for you to do and there for you to be. Someone 
Of course, we know all the negative beginnings and endings. Wanted you to believe that you should be boxed in to a small belief system, to a place where you could not really move out and, and worship with everyone in the world. But we want community to come. God is a man, a spirit, a God of community. Yes, Jesus was a man and God was a man through him. But the messages that are coming now will be greater, will be more expanded, will be of the truth. And I am not here to take questions today, but just to let you know that I will be back with the truth and with messages that are needed to be heard as time moves forward. This was the introduction. This was the beginning of my message from God. Much love to you. Good blessings and good life to you. And I will speak again very shortly. But there are many here that want to speak. So I will let you go. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the message. So we really appreciate that. this someone called me i am shell hello shell there are many waiting what was it, the subject matter that you wanted me to speak about okay so <clears throat> i had I had uh, heard this, uh, she's actually a scientist, she was talking about the, the correlation between not clinical depression, but depression, and how that can help propel you into awakening. Propel you into awakening through yes. depression? Yes. Okay, the reason, I understand the question. There are many things about depression that people do not understand. Why depression even exists is because there is a need for the negative to make the positive more appreciated, not taken granted of. Um, you see, negative, negativity exists so that you may enjoy positivity even in a greater way. And so this is what she is talking about. She is saying that when this depression is dealt with and is passed, you can then appreciate all the things that are positive that are around you. But it is the view, the per perspective that you are using to look at life that brings you joy or negativity. You see, if you have been dealt with many negative things in your life, then you tend to live in those realities because you have experienced these things. The negativity is what you have experienced, so you do not realize how much of a greater good there is, how much joy there is out there to experience. So therefore, as you start to experience or move out of the negativity to experience the positivity, you realize that you want that instead of what you have experienced in the past. So as you are moving out, and there are several different ways to do that, which would take several hours to explain, but I'm doing a quick job because I know that there is so many out there that want to speak. But as you are moving out of your negativity by way of uh, new experiences and new realities and new beliefs, then you start to move out of your old ways and into some new experiences. 
and you hold on to the positive experiences and not take them for granted because these are the experiences that you want to keep. You look back and you, oh, of course, you can fall back into this negativity because this is what you are most used to, what you're most experienced, what your world around you is feeding you. And there, if you do not change it, then it will, of course, be the same. But as you experience greater things, you move out of that and build positivity into your life in a way that brings that into your reality as a new form of experience, a new way to experience your life, a new way to experience the things around you, you put positivity on things instead of leaving them to be pulling you back into negativity. Do you understand that? Because they do, you do have that magnetic thing with negativity. You sometimes are, are pulled to it because that's what you, you, the only thing you know about well, it is what you've experienced all your life. And so it does magnetically try to draw you back. But, Hang on to the positive. Now, some people have a very hard time with that. It is like, oh, I cannot do that because it doesn't exist. Or there's very little of it. But that is a belief system. You must believe that there is more good out there than there is in your life at this time. Now, meditation, prayer, all these things help. But what is the thing that will help the most? Positive people. Be around them as much as possible. Find them. Find your positive group. Like you have found this group here. How many of you can say, I was in a very negative way until I found maybe some people in this group that helped pull me out, helped me get more experience in a positive way. Do I have some people out there that have experienced this? Yes. Yes, I yes. have one in the room here. But yes. you see, when you change the, the things around you, then your world can change. And people are one of the great, well, are the greatest things to help you to find this change. Their example, if it is a beautiful, loving, and caring, do you want to be around that person or the one that's going to be grumpy and pull you down and make you feel like that you don't belong? Of course, you're going to go toward the positivity as much as possible, but you must find them. If you stay where you are in your depression, in your lowness, and you do not seek a way out, then how are you to find it? How are you to know it? But now, as you are looking at one another as examples of goodness, of kindness, of joy, of positivity, you may help yourself pull yourself away from these things that were once all around you and see that there is something greater for you. Is there any questions? Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to give an example. Somebody here has a friend that um, her husband died. And um, she's afraid she's going into depression because she has had um, some issues in the past with drugs. So I was wondering if, if you had any advice for her. Yes. There are those that go into depression because they are missing someone. But it is the perspective of that person that they should be low at this time because it is respectful. Do you understand what I am saying? Yes. But if they realize this person has gone on to a greater existence, 
and they would want this person who is left behind to also have a greater existence even though they are not there they must find the positivity in this action this death there is positivity there because they are in a much happier and more beautiful place now of course they are going to miss them but there are other people there are other other people to speak to and to bring joy into their life is it necessary for you to cut yourself off from joy when one has left of course there may be an appropriate morning time if that's what you believe you should do however it is not something you should dwell in because those people that have gone on would not want you to do that they would want you to find the joy in life to move forward and to make it something of your future to grab onto those that are helping you to pull out of this negativity because it is unnecessary for one thing. And it is only respectful to a certain point in another way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. So her as a friend, what, what, can, she, what can she tell her um, to help her move on, to help her even though she, there's obviously going to be a mourning period, um, but, of course. But what can she? Um, what can she do? She can tell her that he is or she is in a better place, and they are very happy to be there, and they want you to be happy too. They do not want you to be in mourning forever. They want you to have a good life. Would that person that have passed on want you to dwell in negative sadness for the rest of your life? No. Would they want you to experience that separation consistently for the rest of your life without it healing in some way? No. So move on. You must move on. And I know they may, may fight that, but you see, it is their choice. They can choose to stay in that negativity if they want. They can choose to stay in that sorrow and sadness if they want. It is free will that they move out or stay in. But you can tell them what is the good portions of this death. And that is that the person is in a greater place and wants you to be in a greater place as well. Now you must decide or that person must decide if they are going to move forward or not. A lot of that is a belief system, isn't it? I mean, of course. So many people feel guilty that if she moves on and is happy right away that somehow she's been bad to herself or bad to the person who's moved on. And it's almost a guilt, a guilt potentially, or shame of yes. letting go of that. Understood. Did you hear all that? Yes. Did you hear it? Yes. Then let me tell you this about that. Whenever someone is pulling out and having joy afterwards, let them say why they're having joy. I am happy that they are in a better place. I am happy that they love me enough to want me to move forward. I am happy that life goes on and there are many things to be joyful about in this life. There is no reason to feel guilty for moving on after a loved one passes. Now, of course, there is a period of time where you are going to be sad. But you must realize that that time cannot last forever. And that you must move forward. And you must get on with your life. And you must make something. You must continue your work. You cannot just stop and bring joy to it as you move on because you know they are joyful and they are watching you and are joyful that you are moving on in a positive way does this make sense so yes. when you feel guilty for feeling joy that is because society or others have put that on you 
It is not something that you should put on yourself. Why should you feel guilty? It was not your fault that the passing happened. It was not your fault. And therefore, you should be joyful eventually about moving on. And the, the place that they are in is beautiful and happy. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then one more question. It's sort of on subject, but it's not. It's, it's about... You know, some people have, it, it's a challenge for them sometimes when there's, um, there is someone that it's, um, I have to say a bully kind of uh, behavior and um, they're in fear of standing up to the person. So I was wondering if, if you could speak a little bit about that and, and how they can help themselves um, yes. just stand up for themselves. Yeah. I, let me tell you this. There are many of those out in society that are considered bullies or people that want control or people that manipulate or those that want you to be a certain way because they are a certain way. Let me tell you this. You must be yourself no matter what the occasion. You cannot let people put on you their personality, their negativity, their, their emotions. Why should you do this and suffer? Because you are afraid? You are taught to be afraid. Now is the time to be yourself. If you are truly yourself, you are not afraid to be yourself. You are happy and proud of who you are. Not the kind of pride that puts people down, but the kind of pride that pulls yourself up. And when these people come and bring this negativity to you and try to put it on you, you can say, I understand where you're coming from. And then you can walk away. Or you can do something to change the subject because they are the ones with the negativity and they are trying to put it on you and you are the one that are trying to be positive. Be yourself. And I know some of you say that's very hard with some of these people. They will really try to crush you then. But is that what you want? Do you want them always to have control of you? Do you want them always to be there trying to push you down, if they have done so in the past, then that is because you have not been yourself and you have allowed this to happen. And they will think that it will always happen and so they will always be that way. But if you suddenly and decisively decide to be your, yourself, and the positive person and say they are in a better place they are in a loving world now or if it's something completely different you can just give your opinion that is of the truth but do not be a withering flower and say oh yes that's the way i believe you must be confident in who you are you must be confident that you are right that you are positive how else can you face a bully? They must know that your confidence, your love, your positivity is perfectly intact and it's not fake or it can be destroyed by anything that they say. Many of you let yourself be destroyed by others by accepting their negativity and bringing it into yourself and saying, oh, I guess so. They must be right. But they are not always right. They are not always right. And even if they are right, is it right to bring that to you in that way? There are ways to bring correction to people that are not, cor not, that are not negative. You can be a very positive leader and have change and all around you 
and it's not negative and it's not bullying you understand what i'm saying i'm touching on many different forms yes of thought processes about this but i think i need to because there's many different forms of bullies out there that bring negativity to you and you must be confident of your positivity you must be confident on who you are if you're not confident you're going to let them crush you so work on who you are remember that you are a positive being that you have light within you that you are you are strong i don't know how else, how else to say it but your example of love your example of positivity can only be good. It may infuriate them that you are not accepting what they want you to accept. But on the other hand, they will respect you for being who you really are, if that's who you truly are. If you are truly a negative person, then you will probably just accept it and be negative with them. Thank you. Um, um, that was excellent. I think we're going to have to re-listen to that. Um, I think uh, Sheer has a question. Hello, Sheer. How are you? I am fine. How are you? I am doing well. I have a question. I hope it's not a too long question. Um, I start to see videos. I will call it Met Kahan 2.0. Last year, there were many videos about the blood moon, and people thought they are going to ascend and leave the earth. And now I see videos about the energy cloud, and they're saying similar stuff. Now, can you explain about the densities? Because some say. Yes, we you, you hear all these people talking about ascending and moving up and not being part of the earth anymore. And, of course, the earth is going through a fourth dimensional phase. But it's not going to be all of a sudden you're going to be ascending. No, that's not how it works. Everything works in its own time with its own ways of facilitating change. You understand change comes sometimes quickly, but with these kinds of spiritual changes, they are very slow because people have to get used to them. So these people that are saying, oh, we're going to be ascending next week and get prepared for that, they do not know what they're speaking of. They do not understand time like God sees time because soon in God's time can be a thousand years or even 10,000. But, of course, it's not that long. But it soon, to God, is a long period of time because he is infinite. And so when he says it's going to be a long time, oh, my goodness, it won't be in your lifetime. But let me tell you about these different things. The fourth dimensional energy anomaly around your planet is there, and, and it does have a purpose, and it is helping for people to to start to understand what ascension is. It's fanning the flames of ascension. It's fanning the flames of understanding. At least it will be by the end of it. But this does not mean that people are going to be uh, disappearing and rising up into the sky and turning into ghosts and things of this nature. It means that you are, your gradual ascension of your gradual evolution is taking place but if they tell you it's happening this week or next week or within a couple years they are wrong yeah i saw some videos like seven signs that you're going through the fifth density and one of them was you're going through walls so <laughs> And I yeah. saw many of my friends sharing that video, and it's like, sorry to, you know, but I don't think Is so. That, have, that, have they made it a reality in their existence that they are walking through walls? 
now I was able to put my hand not through them, so... <laughs> you see, the density is still third to some extent. You're moving to fourth density, but still, in fourth density, they have to prepare places to walk through the walls. It is not just you can walk through the walls any place you like. There are places that are prepared, like to doorways and portholes, that you can walk through because the density is lighter. But it's still, you, there are places you cannot walk through. It is too dense. So therefore, these people have not a pure or full understanding of the densities, for one thing. They do not understand um, what is happening with this fourth dimensional energy cloud and they are very much wishful thinking that they do not have to live in the third dimension anymore too bad yes there are portholes open for the fourth dimensional energy to come in but you were born into third dimension and that is where you will stay in this lifetime of course there are you are entering fourth dimension in some ways but it will not be the full fourth dimension like they are saying that it is going to be. That is ridiculous. It will take a hundred years for even that to pre prevail through the earth. At least a hundred, maybe more. Yeah, that was my thought exactly. Hey, I was wondering if you have many, maybe a message for me. A message for you is that Yes, you have a handle on what is real and what is not real. Continue to move forward. Be the example that you are to these people and say, yes, I hear what you're saying, but I have to disagree because of what I am experiencing in my life. And then you can share that there is great experiences in your life and that they are third dimensional, but they are beyond the third dimension because you do travel, but in the astral, that is. But I see that these people are just hungering to get out of the third dimension. And, and that is not, a, I can understand that. The third dimension is not easy, it's difficult. And they're like, goody, goody, we're going to get out of this. But that is not the case. They are looking forward to things that are not there unrealistic, unrealistically. So be an example, be, just be yourself, and you will be fine. And the message for you is that greater things always are coming for you. You don't realize how much you've grown over the last couple of years, but you are a different person now than you used to be, and you will continue to change. Thank you very much, and much love to you. Much love to you as well. Shell, on that note, um, you, you said we're moving up a density, um, not a dimension. Am I correct to assume that? It depends on who you're talking to and what their definitions of dimensions and densities are. That's why I'm asking you. So what is your Yes, and I would say it is a density that you are moving up because the fourth dimension is a different kind of density and it is not a different dimension in my in my uh understanding and in my teachings of densities and dimensions they are two different things okay yeah i, I thought the same too but i just wanted to uh can you explain that out. a density is um you were in third density, a hard, harder density. Uh, the fourth density is slightly lighter. And another dimension is really that. It is somewhere that is unlike any place in your dimension. You are in a third dimensional world, and, and you can move to fourth, fourth density and think of it as a different dimension. But actually, a dimension can be actually of a different perception of life altogether. Does that make sense to you? Yes. 
So it's like it's like still being in third dimension, but you start to view life differently and see things uh, very different, and and you become lighter in your heart in your yep. perceptions well, of life. Also, I have to say this: facts change in the other dimensions. They are not the same facts that are in this dimension. This is true with, um, with uh, densities as well. Some facts change, but not as drastically as when you go into a different dimension. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Very good. Okay. Um, Michelle, did you have a question? That was, I answered her question. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Jasmina had a question, and I think you're good for answering this. She said um, she wants to know how to get in touch with her creativity um, if, oh. if you feel it's blocked. Very good. I'm glad you asked this. Because this is a very this is a very common thing. People find themselves blocked from creativity. Why do you think that is? Because they're letting they're letting the things that around them uh, affect their senses, and they're and it's not really what should be affecting them. Let me tell you this: do a meditation, an intention meditation, to be yourself to let those creative juices that God gave you out. Because this is where you're going to find all your creativity is within. God has set up your soul to be n like none other and your creativity to be like none other. And so whenever you reach in and find those areas in the soul of God and of self, then those creative juices will start to open. You understand that it's about who you are and being yourself once again many secrets are unlocked by just being who you're supposed to be instead of letting society push on you and and tell you who you are or make you fit in some kind of area that is not correct for you being yourself and i know some people have said you know being myself has caused some problems because being myself is far different than what I was five years ago. Because I wasn't myself five years ago, and now I'm a completely different person, and they're thinking that I'm losing my mind. But you're not. You're yes. gaining your mind. <laughs> you understand that? Yeah. Yes. You're, you're losing what was everybody else's mind. You're losing everybody else's thought processes and gaining your true thought process, which might be a little alien, which might be a little angelic, which might be a little bit different than what Earth expects from you. But guess what? You're going to be much happier with who you are when you are the person God made you to be. And that is my answer for you, dear. Your creativity is amazing. Jasmina, your creativity is amazing. Find it in yourself, in your God. And let go of these outside sensory perception things. You're looking and seeing things. Look inside and find the things inside. Draw a picture of the heart if you have to in a way that is you. What does your heart look like? Who is your heart? You are your heart. So therefore, draw the inner parts and let them come out. What a beautiful creation that would be. Thank you for that answer. Uh, I can use it also. <laughs> and the thing about people thinking that, that you're crazy, yeah. I, many of us have been told that. Uh, you are myself. just becoming who you should be. You are getting rid of the social thoughts that, that, oh, I have to fit in here. I have to do this. I have to do that. 
if you are a mother and you have beautiful children, teach them that beauty that is you. So that, and teach them they must be who they are. Of course you must give them guidance because they're still young and impressionable, but it does not mean that you have to box them into this is your personality and this is your personality. And so I'm going to bring you up so that you can be that kind of person. And this. No. Know within yourself that God is working and he will teach you how to teach your children. Because when you are truly yourself, wisdom and understanding, love and grace and mercy are all part of who you are. And will they not see that as an example of who to be when they become older? There is nothing more. Okay, beautiful. thank you. Thank, thank you for more. that answer. Um, uh, I think, does anybody else have any questions, um, for Shell that are in the room with Jim? There are others that are waiting. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Something I've been wondering that something has mentioned about this cloud. I heard that we were supposed to be in it for about 2000 years. Is that correct? No, the anomaly is not that large. It, it may last till the end of January or through some portions of February. Oh. But it is, you see, where the solar system is moving around the core of the galaxy. And this anomaly is not that large, and it is fairly stationary. It is moving a slight bit, but not very much. And so it, we are actually moving through it. And actually, we will get through it, or you will get through it, by the end of January or February. Not that it's small. It's a rather large cloud that is going to become sentient in a few thousand years, perhaps. Right. And it is not as large as we're not going to be in it or you're not going to be in it for centuries. You see, I'm in it right now as I'm talking to you. So it is easy to relate to the fact that I am in it as well. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you want some other ones to come through at this time? Yes, Shell. Um, I just wanted to show you a picture that, um, that Khan did of, you? I don't know. It's you hard for me that. to see through these eyes. However, it I can see the eye portion and they, that looks very correct. All right. Thank you very much, Con, for all that you do. Thank you, uh, Shell, for, for, for coming and answering our questions. And um, I think everyone will appreciate that and can use a lot of the information that you gave us. So. I love it when you come. Um, Thank I, you. I, I think you teach us I a noticed lot. Jim has asked me to keep my hand motions to a minimum, so I was trying my best not to wave around too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Because when he watches some of the videos with me in them, he gets a little nervous that my hands are going to hit something, or his hands, You, I mean. So... I kept them down today. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank so you I'm, very there much. There's someone else waiting or several someone else's, so I'll yes. bring them at this time. All right. Thank you very much. Re Thank you. Much love to you. Much and love. be aware that we much are, love. as the Chikani people, we are aware of who you are. We love you very much and are trying to help you with thought processes to help you to rise up and be greater species than you ever could imagine. Thank you. Much love. Yes. Mm. Eh. Yeah. 
One minute. I wonder who that is. <laughs> yeah. I'm the reincarnated Marilyn Monroe. What do you think? <laughs> uh, hold on. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Hi. How you doing? Very yeah. good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. Um, all right. So somebody called me, so I'm here. Yay. Yes. I think everybody loves you, Grindel. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So what are your oh, somebody's here to ask a question already. All right. Okay. So glad you could come through. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I mm. knew you've been wanting to come through for quite a while. Yeah. They it's keep throwing me out of line. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I asked for you to come. Yeah. They said third or nothing. So, um, yeah. 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 How are you handling these new energies when you come through gym? Actually, the new energies are a little better for me because I'm more fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional, you know, up, upper dimensional. So they help with the density portion so I can get in a little bit better. You notice today I didn't scream or yell a lot and complain and, and all that. So, yeah, it's been a little better. Glad to hear that. Yeah. That's all I wanted to know. All right. All right. What other questions you have? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. In the room? Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> yeah. So, Grindel, you're known for being able to identify who's who in the spirit world very accurately. Yeah. Who was I channeling in Prue the last 10 days? Um, one moment. I have to check that. Okay. In. <coughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, you were channeling one of the people that came from the rocks that were escaped. <coughs> one of the people in the in the Machu Picchu rocks. Yes. Their name was. Well. And Sabrina, you're going to be surprised, but it was Lanook. Lanook? What yeah. is Lanook doing over there when she's with me? <laughs> well, she had to come out back to Machu Picchu for, uh, to talk to John. Okay. Yeah. So that's who it was. Yeah. And you had another, another person. It was Patuka. Patiuka, I'm sorry. Patiuka, I am sorry. I pronounced it wrong. Yeah, kick me for it. Patiuka was also with you. Yeah. Do you want hear? Did you hear any of these names? No. All right. Did they give you great messages? I got more messages in Cusco, I guess, at, at the hotel in Cusco. Ah, uh, yes. That would make sense to me. Yeah. yeah, and that was somebody different than those two, I guess. Yes, that's someone different. Okay. And I don't know who that is, actually. Okay. But they will reveal themselves, they said. Okay. Yeah. Did, did Lanook yeah. yeah. give you any interesting information? Yeah. Well, it's all rather unclear, but... They said I was a leader in Peru in the past, in past lifetimes. And when I went through the leader's uh, building or room and, and I got lots of energy and charge energy and they said that I had been a leader at one of my, you know, I don't know what century or what time frame, but I, had been a, I played a role there. They said. <laughs> That's why Lanuk had to go there because she was part of that era. You realize that I'm Lanuk. Yes. <laughs> so yes, but you've been to Machu Picchu many times. So, and when Lanuk spoke, she was speaking to him of from a different age. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should talk to you, Sabrina, about. Yeah. Look. Yeah, we'll t we'll touch base. Uh, um. Like, yeah, I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. 
Um, yeah, it was actually very informative, too, to some degree. Yeah, she was informative. And so you felt sort of empty for a couple days there. So that's why. <laughs> yeah. You realize that sounds weird. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. It doesn't matter how it sounds. I am only speaking the truth. I, I know, I know. It's just funny. Um, yeah. Carolina yeah. has a question. Yeah. Mm. Hey, can I ask Jody's question? Uh, yeah. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me, Carolina was in line first. Hello, Brindo. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful. Are you feeling better? Yes, thank you. I was going yeah. to ask you about that. I've been, I've been uh, visited by some people who don't want me to carry on my mission. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could help me with that. Yeah, Takur and I help you. Thank you so much. You you Thank knew Takur was there, right? Yes, yeah. You knew I was there too, right? Yeah, I feel your energy around, so thank you. You're welcome, and we're going to continue to help you out, so don't worry. Oh, and we're going to help you. Joe as well, so he's... That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Grindel, Very I believe good. I believe you visit my hybrid children. Yeah. Um so I thank you for that. You're um, welcome. They're all doing very well. It's yeah. is the reptilian hybrid a cesspod um mix. I didn't hear that. What? Is the reptilian boy a zespod? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I thought so. I just wanted... That's my species, yeah. Okay, good, good. His name is Gretzik. Gretzik. Yeah, it sounds German, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. No. But, um, no, that was it for me. Thank you, Grindel. And uh, please send my love to Sparkles. Yeah, Sparkles here. Yeah. And say hello from me. Much yeah. love. She doesn't like to talk as much as I do. Surprise! <laughs> okay. You on our planet, it's probably the opposite. Men talk more than women. <laughs> on your planet, it's women talk more than men. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think they both talk pretty much a mile, mile the same. All well, right. She's, she's welcome to talk anytime. Uh, okay, I'll let her know. Uh, thank you, Greenville. Much love. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Christine? Hello, Grindel. Hey, um, Christine, how are you? I'm doing fine. I was wondering if when I asked for your help the other day, um, yeah. dealing with a, a soldier type person, yeah. if that was you. It was me. I'm, I know soldier type people a lot. That's and why that I was asked me. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I think I got through. I think I did. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to um, look at it as a, um, as me being a loving person to demonstrate to him what unconditional love is. Um, something that I need to um, do for myself, I'm trying to do for him. You know, Christine, you've really changed in the last eight to ten months you you like people more than you ever have before oh my god um but it's because you're seeing them a little differently and i'm very proud of you because your work with the animals is in incredible they just love you but now your work with people is becoming really cool also yeah well, thank you very, very much. Yeah, you are becoming a different kind of... You're happier. That's what it is. So anyway. Anyway, good job. Much love to you. Much love to you, too. Yeah. Sure. 
Hey, Grindel. Hey. <laughs> can you hear me? I can, yes. How are you, Sheer? I'm good. Uh, first of all, I was wondering if there's something uh, new to discuss. Yeah, I've been telling people I've been working in Israel for the last, well, eight, ten months at least. I mean, working really hard. I've been there longer than that, but two years. But yeah, I'm making some progress. But I still haven't, Ooh. I'm not where I want to be yet. But we're, I'm w working on it still. Thank you very much. Maybe you can come here and we'll we eat some hummus or something if you're around. Yeah, if you have some hummus with meat in it. <laughs> uh, I was wondering, first of all, you say that the higher the energy is easier for you to enter gym. What uh, density are you regular to? I'm in the fourth density mostly. But I can go to fifth or third, yeah. Because ah. in our our planet, they have there's an area of interdimensional shifting, which is unusual for a planet. But we do have a fifth dimensional area, so, and I can enter that and not be harmed, because oh. it is natural to the planet, and it's a very low fifth dimensional energy. So it is, yeah, I can do it. Oh, that's cool. And I was wondering if in theory, I know that the cloud, the energy cloud is going to become a being someday, like in a few couple of, I don't know, couple of thousands of years. Is it possible to channel that being from the future because time is kind of a, an illusion, you can say? Yes, it's possible, but I'm not supposed to do it right now. It is possible, though, yes. It'll take some work and concentration, but I can do it, yes. Hmm. Nice. Do you think there's potential in that kind of conversation for someone to have with the cloud? Well, I'm not sure. I don't know what kind of conversation it would be. I would have <laughs> to find out if I'm permitted <laughs> to do it. I know that it is possible to do I'm not sure if I'm permitted to do it or not. So that's the thing I have to find out. Mm, okay. Thank you very much. It's always awesome to speak with you. Yeah, thanks. You too. Uh, Sam is next. Yeah. Hi, Grendel. Sam. Is that Sam? That's me. Yeah. Hey, can uh, Kendall, can you give us some uh, information regarding the um, the Coda pipeline? There's a lot of protests there. Can you um, you know can you update us with anything? Because um, a lot of the Native Americans are basically uh, fighting for their rights and protecting of their lands. Uh, I'm just trying to make this an awareness for everybody to know about it. If you can share some information. Well, I don't know a whole lot about that. You'll probably have to ask somebody else. I do know they're running into some difficulties, though. Um, it's going to be a lot more expensive than they said because, of course, where the pipeline is going, there is some, there is a volcanic area. They have to go around where, um, but, and that's going to be a lot more expensive if they decide to go through with that. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, um, but the pipeline itself is a good idea in 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 uh, thought process, but I don't know if it'll it's going to happen because of the way they're going to have to do it. So that is something that I can tell you. I don't know a whole lot about it, but I do know they they're running into some problems, not only with the people, but actually with the path of the pipeline. Okay. Okay, wonderful. And another question I have is more of personal nature. Um, I saw, I saw a reptile in my vision, and I feel yeah. in my heart that was me. It has a snout. Um, yeah. Can you confirm if that was part of your race? Um, yeah. Or any yeah. Other if it had a snout, was it about five inches? 
Um, I don't know the length, but it looks like probably about that length. Yeah, the more good-looking reptilians have the snouts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was probably either us or the Elliot Sean Dizendi or the friendly reptilians, as they're called. They all, we all have snouts. Okay. Some of the other reptilian species do not. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's all I want to know. Thank you, Grandon. Much love to you. Much love. Yeah. Kaspar. Hey, Grindel, it's Kaspar. Never talked to you. Nice to talk to you. Ah, Kaspar, I know who you are, though. You're in, like, the middle of Europe somewhere. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I was wondering... Point. I was wondering about uh, the Tiwanaku civilization, if you could elaborate a little bit and if there is a connection with me to that place. Yeah, well, that's more personal. You do have a connection to them cause, and you relate to them very well. And mm -hmm. there are some of them that every now and then visit you. But I, they have a home under the earth right near you. Oh, really? Yeah, they made a little place. Could I go there somehow? Uh, if they let you, and at this point, I don't know that they've let anybody go there. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. um, just a yeah. short one. There was a reptilian in my dream recently. Yeah. What was that? Did it have a snout? Yeah, it was kind of, it was underwater. Uh, in the dream, and it was brownish, oh. and it did have a snout and a tail. Oh, that was a different species altogether. That was an underwater reptilian. Oh. They don't have them here on your planet. They're not here yet. All right. But they, they do exist in um, uh, the Andromeda 4 and Andromeda 6. Somewhere out there, they, one of the, a couple of the Andromedas have those. And also in K four underwater, but they're not they're not real advanced, at okay. least not at this point. Okay. Now they're they're they are in third dimension. However, I'm surprised you were able to to pick up on them. They're interesting. They look more like alligators or crocodiles on your planet, a little bit. Right, right. A little bit more uh, army and leggy, but mm, similar. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say you're, you're allowed to visit me sometime if you like. And uh, yeah, yeah fun. I will. Fun. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Hi, Grendel and Sabrina. Okay. Uh, first, Carolina would like if you would uh, speak um, your language for a little bit. She wants to hear it. All right. Right now. If you would, please. All right. It's it's similar to Alia Shondai Zendi, except it's even uh, less. There's less vowels, and you'll hear. It. All right. Yeah, how was that? That was good, thank you. What I said was, here I am sitting here speaking my language to everybody who don't understand it. So, <laughs> That's all right. It was fun anyway. <laughs> yeah, because she, yeah. she said that when you had gone to, to see her, um, that uh, she wanted to speak a reptilian, and then she was asking if that was uh, your language. Yes, that is my language. So. Remember. It may not sound exactly the same coming from her. It might be a different part of the planet. Everybody has their own colloquialisms and things of that nature. But if it's similar, it's the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Then uh, 
for myself, I was wondering, Brindle, if you could help me. Um, I don't. I have I get the awareness of there being a being in the room, but I don't see them. And I was wondering if you could help me with that. Are they there now? I uh, I think right now I'm not feeling anyone, but I'm not paying attention. I'm too busy. All right. Well, not call on right. me, and I can help you with that. I know okay. who's there. Anyone can really help you if you call on them. Oh. Um. There is someone there. So, uh, but they don't want to be identified right now. Not online. They said, please don't say my name. All right. Okay. But it's someone you know. <laughs> <laughs> someone close to me? Yeah. Yeah, I know who this. Yeah, uh, yep, you do. Okay. Yeah, no, I just want to. Um, to, to see, to see the entities, not Oh, just... you want to see them. That's something different. Yes, I want to see you, them. I, you see, that's another thing. Whenever they talk about being yourself, now that there's a lot of fourth dimensional energy around, you are becoming part of that. So you be, the more you become yourself, the easier it'll be to see fourth dimensional beings. Okay. Because I, I think part of it was because I used to be able to see them when I was a teenager. Ah. Um, but it was too afraid. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm just wondering now what it is to stopping me, if it's, if it's still fear or, or if it's just that I need yeah. to work on it. It's partially fear. And the other thing is you just thought you could see it as a child. You weren't quite sure that it was real. And so it's partially your belief system as well. Believe that you can see what you saw before and don't be afraid of it because there's nothing to fear. Yeah, if you want to see me, just look. Yeah. Nothing to fear here. <laughs> I won't eat you, yeah. I promise. Uh, if I, do. I know, I'm comfortable with you. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Okay, thank you. Innocent. Um, there's something about innocence and fourth dimensional energy that there's like a fearlessness with innocence. You just, they're able to look and see what they want to see if they want to see it. Okay. It goes beyond what they were taught because, yeah, it just does. I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, because I, I would see a lot, and then it was like, uh... Yeah. So I would end up in my sister's bed a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Okay. Christy all has a... They're no. telling me I got to go. Oh, there's somebody else there? Oh, there's a ton of people here. It's like, it looks like a crowd. Okay, just just one more question from Christy, and then and then we we'll yeah. go. Hi, Christy. Hi, Grindel. Hello. And um, I have a question, and this was for my son. He has autism, and his hearing is extra yeah. sensory. And um, <laughs> he's gotten to where he's hearing more of the silent noises that I don't pick up on, and he's uh, clicking, like making clicking noises and hissing. Um, just and screaming randomly, like just I think that's his reaction to what sounds like he's in touch with insectoids. Insectoids clicking is part of their language. Also, screaming can be part of their language. And um, does he do any hand motions? Um, he used to ride in the air a lot, just like he's like uh, holographic looking. Uh, okay. Yes, it sounds like he's in touch with insectoids. Uh, they can amp their hearing is very acute because that's how they protect themselves. They they're sonically in tune with everything around them. And it, and it sounds like the and clicking is part of their language. So um, if 
do you want me to uh, come and help get rid of them? Um, yeah, I would like that because I feel like it's more bothering him. And I've asked you before, too. So if you just want to uh, come live with us <laughs> all the time and wow. help us, then that would be just yeah, fine. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. If they're if they're actual aliens, they're not much I can do about. I can get rid of them temporarily, but they will come back yeah, if they, they have, have an agenda. I have to find out if they have an yeah. agenda. Yeah, I they were here this summer, and and then I asked Akur to help me, and they went away, and now it's a different. Seems like it's amped up more. Um, yeah, with all the right. grid, I'll, yeah. I'll come over and look at the situation. Okay, I thank you so much. Nah, no problem. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you uh, for answering Christine's question. I knew she needed to speak with you. Um, yes, I, I'm going to go now. There's okay. somebody else. All right, come. thank you, Rindall. Thank you very much for your yeah. help. Now... Yeah, have a good one. You too. Namaste. Namaste. No, yeah. Wow, stop it. Ugh. Greetings to you. This is Michael. Oh, Michael. Welcome, Michael. I've come to give you a blessing. Today's messages and thought processes have been very interesting and connect in very many levels. And I just want to make sure everyone understands the validity of all that was said today. And so I have come to just give a final blessing on this day's work. But first, if there are any questions for me, I will entertain that at this time. I have a question, Michael. This is Michelle. Yes. Um, I recently had a... A session where I learned about a Lumerian lifetime and I was helping um, heal or keep things in check with Gaia and yes. I was told that I need to try to connect in with the past that lifetime yes and so I could remember how there is to something use... important to remember there yes. it has to do with some of the crystals that were stolen from uh, by the Lumerians from Atlantis. They took them because they were in danger. But you need to go back and relive some of that experience because the location of these crystals have not all been found. And you need to find them. Well, Michael, I don't know how. <laughs> you just need to do a past life regression. With anyone who does them or do them myself with know. anyone who will do them with you okay but there are some crystals that have been found but there is one particular one that you know where it is at and that is why you must go back 
Hopefully, well, it is also, still in the same place. I was also told that I need to use a particular crystal, but they couldn't figure out what it was. And maybe this is the same crystal to work on healing Gaia now, which is why they yeah. were telling me about this lifetime. You need to get... One moment. There are many crystals that are around you already. I know, but it, they said I need one sphere of selenite and one sphere of one that looks like earth colors. It has green and blue and brown, but I don't know what stone that was, and they didn't know what that stone is, and I've been researching, and I can't get a definitive read on it. Like the, it I think it's a be. conglomeration of stones. Yes. They want me to Part do it in it spheres. Lapis lazuli. Okay. That is the blue portion. Malachite is the green. And what other color? Brown? Brown. What about Dioptus Shatakite? Tiger eye. All in one conglomeration? Do they all grow near each other? So no, you need, in three, one? you need the th three separate and put them together. But how do I make that a sphere? It will become a sphere in your thought processes. It does not have to become a sphere in reality. Yeah. Okay, so malachite, lapis, and tiger eye? Yes. Thank you. Um, thank you so much, Lev. I will work on a regression. I appreciate it. And I love you. Jay? Much love and many blessings. Thank you, Michael. Hello, Michael. Yes. How are you? I'm doing very well today. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm very grateful that you're with me and I think about you from time to time. It I was wondering if you had a message there. for me. Continue to move forward in your joy. There has been something in your life that has changed just recently. It is bringing you some joy. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Continue to move forward with this. My love for you is strong, and there is things for you to experience at this time that will open your eyes to a greater understanding of joy, positivity, and the passion for life. Thank you so much. You are welcome. Valerie? Hi, Michael. It's a pleasure to see and speak with you. It is a pleasure to be here. I believe that I speak with you quite often. And you do. I was um, told recently that I had a green angel be able to uh, combine with me. It has changed my outlook on life, I must say, and the way I react to different things. And I feel blessed for this happening. Um, I just want to know that I am on the right path and that I should yes, continue I what I'm doing. Do you now. know the name of this green angel? I was not given a name. Invert Yell. I N V E R T I E L. Invert Yell. <clears throat> Thank you. It is a blessing to have Invertiel with you. She, yes. he, is a giver of great love and health and information. You're experiencing the health portion. Yes, that's true. I haven't been feeling as badly as I was before. I have a, I have a, large feeling that I'm not going to have to go through the surgery that I thought was coming and so she's helping you with this believe that ask. she can help you become whole and it will be so 
Can you tell me if the part that I need to work on the most is in the uh, solar plexus area or in? Just, which you do not color? have to place your thoughts in one area. Just let the body be full and healthy. Thank you so much. Much love. Much love to you. Um, do you have time for one more question? Yes, and then the prayer must come. Okay. Uh, Jody just wanted to know um, if you have any messages for her. There is some confusion there. I'm feeling that she is having a fight with some direction of some sort. I say to you, just go in and speak to the God inside of you and help to clear up this confusion. Your light is bright. You have much love and goodness to give. But do not let this, whatever it is, come between you or shield you from something that is very positive. I think that there's more to this question, or more to what I need to say, but I cannot get through at this time, because there is some blockages. But be well, and I will come to you and help you with this situation. That is it. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> Sam, Sam just wanted to uh, thank you for having his back. One moment. There is a question in the room here. Okay. Oh, Michael, how are you? I am very well. It was wonderful being with you in Peru for the last 10 days. It was wonderful spending time there with you. It was a beautiful time. And the messages I'm being told will be shared with humanity. Of course. Is there any perspectives you'd like to share with the Hukalo group at this time regarding the messages or anything related to that? Only that they are very clear. And they will help you to understand life in general. And life to be fuller and more experienced by living with the angels and with God as a closer union. You see, some people see the angels as a nice intercessory, but we can also be good teachers and we can also be good friends. And so that is what I want to tell you. Befriend us. We are not so far away that we cannot speak to you and be with you and bring God to you. You're the best friend we've always had, the same. Yes. So that is what I wanted to say for now. There is much more specific information, but I could not go into it now. It would take hours. But much love to you. Let me now say a final blessing for you. I'm going to use angelic language to start, and then I will bring it to you in some English, because it loses something in the translation, but I will try to do my best. Musura hasia sanduka. Heria hondu si hallelujahs. Moshusia sandi andonai. And tuturia kachipita pacham shalom. Shukiero Wahandi Sensi Sila Shunsi Insensuro Kuchin Sundada Morana Shutia Rotawa and Furawa Fonsefuiti Tukarokuwa Shansuta Onkuwaki Kakawahi Garahan Sotu 
May God's blessings be with you, and holy praises be with you as well. For you are blessed and are creations of great measure. Your talents and pursuits will be noticed, and many things are written already about you. Know that God, in his great wisdom and understanding, will be with you in strengthening you to bring you up into the ways that you should go, into the light that should be followed, into the path that is bright and illuminated. Let me say to you in these words that you are blessed and the blessing will continue. Amen. Thank you, Michael. And I also want to thank you for uh, helping us the last time with the healing circle that we did. I think it will benefit many. Hello? Hey. Hi, Jim. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? You must be thirsty, yeah. Yes, it was, um, yes, interesting. And um, how many Michelle came like through to today? It. Three. <laughs> we had... Michael? Yes. Oh. We, mm. Michelle we would like to do a Tony if so. possible. Oh, sure. Um, Yes, uh, whoever wants to do a final blessing may do so. Oh, you're ready now? Okay. I thought you wanted to say something else. I'm just waiting for, I didn't, sorry, Val PR person. <laughs> Are you guys ready or do you need to continue talking? Go um, for it. Le yeah, let me, let me just, be before you do it, um, mm -hmm. I just want to say um, if, if, this information it's helpful to you in any way uh please you know uh, consider making a small donation to human colony um so that it can help with the website and whatever other things um but any kind of donation is always appreciated thank you on the website once it didn't work donate part didn't work oh it didn't um all right i will talk to max about it then Okay, thank you for that. Um, sometimes people put a space in front. It, it, there's no spaces or dashes or anything, so sometimes that can be a problem, too. They don't even realize there's a space in front, but uh, there is, so make sure that there is not one. See, Jim does technology. Right. I only know what I'm told. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Are we ready for Michelle? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, all right. Thank you, um, Michelle. Sorry about that. Uh, much love, everyone. Much love. <laughs> The dreams of many civilization rise to God's ears, and he also brings them to the earth for blessings. 
And knowing these things, that you be risen, that you rise, so that you are conscious of the things that you are to bring to the universe as well. Would anybody else like to say a blessing? Okay. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. May the love of the angels and may the likeness of creation bless your journey for that is who you are realize it and embrace who you are may our love be a force to be reckoned with and may you be loved in your entirety Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hey, so I do something um, with my friend uh, <clears throat> on the spirit realm. I nakur taktila huti nakngautur tilwa tukna tu there is no measure to what the people of your planet could do if they put their mind to it if they united and became a team there is so much light here and so much to be overcome we love you and we are with you and we are giving our energies to your energies. Please use them in the best way possible. Much love to you and many blessings for all times. I believe that's it. Thank you. Very cool. Yeah. I love that language that you did, whatever it was. Yeah. I've never heard that, but I loved it. I it. Yeah. I, yeah. That is a fabulous language. I love it. I know. Yes. I don't know. Um, it's I don't know what language that is. Super cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, I love that. <laughs> I did too. It was fantastic. Well, I'll have to ask you what language that was. Yeah, I can, uh, I can tell you. And actually, I did... Uh, a uh, session with ayahuasca uh, like a couple of months ago ago and uh, through came this um what felt like an Arct arcturian energy and uh, it completely um, moved my whole body and um made this incredible language come through which expressed itself as a kind of dance and uh, sounds as well so um, I was told that this is a spirit, Arcturian in spirit, which is a friend of mine. And so this is what comes through. It, it might be one of the ancient Arcturian languages. Yes, possible. Wow, yeah. that is so cool. <laughs> it is. It's fun, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was beautiful. I loved it. Jim. All right, you thank know? you everybody for being here. Jim, do you I'm know, absolutely, do you yes. know what, what Grindel looks like? A little bit is that okay he, this does this look like Grendel? there's um the snout is not quite big enough but uh, there are some similarities yes oh okay the teeth aren't big enough either <laughs> yes <laughs> teeth, bigger teeth all right bigger teeth bigger all teeth right. uh um he um uh, Khan wanted to know so and I think I said I would yes, ask you actually other than that, not bad. Yeah. Okay. Now it's a little bit bigger. Just a little. Okay. All right. Fantastic, everybody. I All right. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for cooperating. Thank you for your questions. Very and good. For the information. Thank you, Jim. And All uh, right. thank have you, a everybody. wonderful day, everyone. We're hungry now, so we're going to go eat. <laughs>